Textual Builder Supply is pleased to present you with this recording of the technical question that is listed in the title of this video. This call may be monitored and recorded for quality assurance. Hi, Rich. <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? Awesome. So I got some stuff up on the screen, and, you know, the, the customer asked me after the fact, after I made a suggestion about, you know, this is supposed to be with cylindrical lock sets, and it didn't even uh, dawn on me when I made the suggestion, and then I started fumbling through the uh, data sheets and whatnot, and stared at them for several minutes and couldn't figure it out, so now we're talking about it, because uh, <laughs> I don't see cylindrical referenced on that replacement anywhere, but I see several options. So I may just not be looking in the right area at the right thing. Yeah. So, um, so you so you've got a Dorma ES95 in play. Yes. And then an RCI F2164. Um, how will have both of those part numbers come into the conversation? Dorma suggested it. Dorma suggested the RCI. Absolutely. Okay. And then yeah. I asked them, will this fit in the same stroke? and work in the same application and actually i didn't ask them on the same application because i didn't ask them about the cylindrical at first but i asked them if it would fit in the same they recommended it as a replacement and so it would fit in the same uh, mortise well that's uh possible but the only way that you would know that is by looking at the template for each it's possible that it will it could um i do believe dorma kava owns rci so that's probably why they said that um right so why not just sell the client the ES95? It's discontinued. Oh, okay. Got it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So do you know if Dorma has discontinued all electric strikes under their name? I do not know that. Okay. Um, well, that's okay. It doesn't matter. Um, they are... It is interesting, though. They yeah. are that's very possible. I know they, they acquired another business that sells something like this, didn't they? Maybe. Oh, who knows who all they, <laughs> they own. But it looks like to me we're just using an old, possibly an old part number. Uh, ES, Electric Strike. Um, ah, okay, yeah. So there you go. So they must have bought RCI and now it's an ES96F because that sure looks like the RCI item. Um, all right, so when it comes to electric strikes, and I've learned the hard way that you have to select the electric strike for the proper frame or door application. And that is, that simply means if it is a wood frame or a wood door, absolutely be positive that you are selecting an electric strike that says it's for a wood door or a wood frame because you okay. could have a pair of doors um, and then you'd stick it in a, into the inactive of a pair. And the reason that that's important is because, and by the way, you can do open back strikes as well and an open back strike just because we're talking about it really quickly, that is a, um, a very, very... Uh, unusual strike to actually see, but this is an open back strike, these 62, 21, 22, and 25. That basically means if you have a pair of doors, an open back strike will actually allow the active door, now in your mind's eye, think of the active door in a pair. Think of any pair of doors. Okay. Think of the active door in the pair. It's got the latch bolt sticking out of the edge. Well, an open back strike would permit the active door to be in the closed position. And then the inactive can close. Now normally that would be a big problem because the inactive door is not going to close and latch because the active is already closed because you're hitting the back side of the latch. An open back strike um, allows you to have that. So it's a, it's a very unusual derivative of electric strikes, strikes in general, but they exist and you should know the term open back equal study more about it. Now... Gotcha. Now, when they, when I'm talking about um, making sure that whatever you order is for the proper application, 
it's really important to, to know that. And here's, here's why. Um, and a lot of what I'm saying to you in all of these conversations are major mistakes that I, I made once. So if you try to take this strike and stick it into a wood frame, you'll never get it in because you can't mortise a wood frame like this. But with a hollow metal frame, you can because the hollow metal frame is all hollow back here. A wood frame is solid. So the, the orientation of the solenoid on a wood frame type will look like this, where you can actually stick it into the frame after you drill the hole. So you don't have to memorize that except to know if you have a wood frame, you got to, got to, got to get one that is for a wood frame, wood frame applications. Don't okay. play the sheet music. No, no improvisation when it comes to that stuff. If you've not hit subscribe yet, we would very much appreciate if you did, and hopefully you're enjoying this video. Now, let's get back to it. Then, when it comes to electric strikes, and all strikes in general, and all electrified hardware, is you must mate up the voltage, both voltage, um, voltage in both the quantity of volts, 12, 24, 8, 16. Um, uh, I know I, I know that there were higher voltage strikes made once upon a time, like 48 volts. You always have to have the proper numerical value mated to the other parts. Your, you know, your power supply, anything else. It all has to be the same okay. voltage. But it also has to be the, pro the same current as well in the sense of AC and DC. You can't mix them directly but you can power DC things with AC voltage if you add an additional piece of hardware called a rectifier. So don't worry about memorizing what I just said. Just know when you played with trains as a kid, that was one type of voltage, okay? You couldn't plug your track into the directly into the outlet in the wall, even though you did, but that brick that you installed into the, you plugged in the wall, that's the transformer. So. Right. That, tran that brick is, tra like your laptop, that brick is transforming it to whatever voltage the equipment takes. That means the locomotive on your train set was work operating at that same, um, same voltage. So okay. you have to use the thing in the right application. You have to have your voltages match in all instances. And then after that, the most important thing is you have to select the correct electric strike. And what that means is Basically, where are you installing it out of the frame? And, and that's always going to be easy. You're installing the strike where a normal strike would go in a single door. Okay, fine. That, that's easy stuff. You could also um, see an electric strike that's going to look different like this one. It all boils down to what hardware you are using with the electric strike. So. When you look at these electric strikes that are installed on the soffit of the frame, and that's literally, I'm, I'm sure I've mentioned this in the past, but definitions of hollow metal parts would be a good thing. Here, 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 here. All of these things have a name. This is called the soffit. You'll install strikes here. You'll install strikes here where they normally go as well. Now, when it's going to be a soffit mounted strike, okay, well, what hardware are you going to mount to a door that requires a soffit mounted? Well, don't worry about memorizing it, it's, but it's rim exit devices. So if you're okay. dealing with a rim exit device, what you want to do is do electric latch retraction. But if you're doing an electric strike, you'll use one that clearly looks different than this when it's installed in the rabbit of the frame. And that's literally what this part is called, the rabbit. Soffit, rabbit. Um, so you have to know, okay, first of all, stop. What hardware am I using? What am, you know, what, what am I controlling with this strike? Trine, uh, I think it's Trine Online. Trine Online, LLC maybe. Yeah, Trine's really good. Small company, independently owned. And when you call their tech support, 
you are guaranteed a callback. There is a gentleman there with a heavy accent, I'm not sure where from, but this man is gold, pure gold. And Trine does a good job when it comes to telling you what you're using. You know, they have a lot of information, you know, what what's being used where. Um, so Trine is another good resource in the sense that I opened up Von Duprin because I'm very familiar with this catalog. It's the same catalog that I was using 30 years ago. So I know where everything is, but it doesn't matter whether it's Dorma or Folger Adam or Hess or any of a million other people. It's always going to be your voltages have to match. Okay. If it says for a steel frame or an aluminum frame or wood frame, great. Make sure you pick the right one. Then you have to know what hardware are you installing it with because it will dictate the hardware. Now Hess does a real um, hanchet entry systems. Before they were owned by Asa Abloy, they were an independent company. I forget their, I forget their, their primary strike number. I thought it was a 6,000. Hess does a really good job in their catalog. Maybe the best. When you pull up their catalog, they literally show a chart. Oh, it's the 1006. They literally show here. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, look at that. Uh -huh. <laughs> so the 1006 CLB, I can use it with cylindrical locks, mortise locks. I'm not sure the difference between... Oh, this the difference between these two mortise locks is the manufacturer. The telltale is where they put the deadlocking tab. Schlage versus Baldwin versus Yale versus Sergeant. Who, who knows? Mortise okay. exit devices. Now you'll notice this is not a rim device. Right. Let's keep... Let's keep... Dead bolts. That's crazy. Uh, let's get to a rim device. Look at this. A hook bolt by Adams Wright. That's crazy. A unit lock. You ain't <laughs> never seen one of these in your life. I Only because of the part of the United States you're from. You've never seen okay. one in real life. If you were in Chicago, Detroit, New York, you'd, you'd seen those. Um, so Hess does a really good job at, at giving you these visuals. And I'm obviously looking for a rim... Uh, 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 device application. I am. I promise I will find one because they have them. Just tolerate this for another moment. No problem. No problem. Oh, preload. Yeah, it's interesting. Just yesterday, I saw hatchet entry systems, and I went, "I've never heard of that before." And then just today, you say, "Oh, that's HES." I'm like, yeah. Oh, interesting. <laughs> yeah, I I don't like HES um, at all because here you go, rim exit device strikes. I don't like Hess because I got burned once and it wasn't their problem. Mm. I got called to a job site on a Saturday because the strike was not operating correctly. I've been on two job sites where the strikes weren't working right and on both instances they were Hess strikes and mm. one was not Hess's fault for sure and the other I'm not really sure. So. Hess does a really good job at showing you graphically what you're trying to find. So use that catalog. The bottom line is you use whatever catalog gets you the answer that you're comfortable with. And once you have a strike model, um, then you're in really good shape. So when Hess showed those two different mortise locks, it's just a different faceplate. They have a modular system. Now, I don't like okay. the 1006 because of how gigantic it is. All, look at this massive thing. That's so gross to look at. I, For me, I look at Von Duprin and I'm like, oh, that's pretty. That's pretty. You don't want to get right. attacked with one of Is it? I don't know. It's just my opinion. Um, it does. It seems more elegant. You know, it's a little more refined. Yeah, a little bit smaller keeper. Um, but the Hess system, if you are someone who wants to supply one strike on the entire job for mortise exit devices, lo uh, deadbolts, cylindrical locks, rim exit, well, not rim exit devices, but you can do that for most applications and just swap out the faceplate. Just sell them okay. a different faceplate. And over here is where you see the LB, DB, DB2, and it's telling you this is what it's for, and it's going to list literally what it's for. So over here, the LB, they're for hardware to accommodate every cylindrical, that's key, and mortise lock, that's key. Mortise lock, this is also a mortise lock, that exit device. It's just a mortise mm -hmm. exit device. 
up to a three quarter inch latch bolt. Now, that is infinitely important what I just said. And that's the last final big point. You always, always, always must know the projection of the latch of what you're working on. And what that means is... This is what that means. The distance from the faceplate to the edge of the lip, uh, to, to, to the projection of the latch bolt. Now, okay. most latch bolts, if you go measure yours on your bedroom door or whatever, it's probably half inch. Well, it's probably half inch in the sense that it's probably a hair under that. The bottom line is that's half inch. Now, if you get into projects where you have a pair of uh, three hour fire rated doors it's very likely that the label on the door is going to say uh, three quarter min min for minimum latch throw, latch throw and what that means is the only way that they got those doors approved was because the lock or the latch they were using doesn't have to be a keyed lock just has to latch was a three-quarter inch latch bolt. Actually, the Yale catalog is better than this. Uh, I like the Yale catalog, but let's just, since we're here, ND53, I want to show you a reference to a three-quarter latch. Three-quarter latches are really expensive uh, when you buy the latch bolts alone. Um, you always want to be really sure. Look at that bad boy. So <clears throat> just imagine that this has a greater projection than this one. If it looks like it does, it's because it does. Half inch, right. three quarter. Now, the reason that that is all incredibly important is because the depth of the keeper on the electric strike, how deep all of this cavity is, is directly related to the projection of the latch. If you try to stuff a three quarter latch or, or the latch of a mortise lock, and those are typically three quarter inch, into a, into a keeper that's not intended to accept a three quarter inch deep latch or uh, uh, projection latch, it's going to work intermittently because the latch bolt is not fully extending um, and it's, it's gonna be a problem. Your lock's not gonna lock correctly. Trying, uh, many manufacturers have typical half inch latch throw, like the Von Duprin 5100. This is a keeper depth of half inch. Don't try to stick a three quarter latch into this 5100, it's not gonna fit. Or most Adams Wright, the 7000 7, series, those are for half inch latch throws. So if you are using a mortise lock or a mortise exit device or a cylindrical lock with a three quarter latch projection, which is really unusual, you have to be absolutely sure that the that you've you've got 10 pounds of sausage. Make sure you got a, an 11 pound bag. Otherwise, it's just not going to fit. So that's the um, last big thing that you absolutely have to know. Application: What are you using it with? That's going to dictate where it'll be mounted. Do you have the proper keeper depth? Are your voltages all aligned? You know, are you good there? And then moving on from there. You know, it's nuances of, you know, will your power supply produce the amount of amperage necessary? So at 24 volts, the, this strike, these strikes require a third of an amp, 0.33 amp. So one third of an amp. Now you'll notice under 12 volt, the amperage nearly doubles. Do you know why that is? And it's really okay to say no. <laughs> I could take a guess, some of the rectifier, but I'm, I would be completely guessing, so I'm going to say no, uh, I don't know. The okay, no, no, it's awesome. <laughs> so um, that's not the answer we were looking for, but thanks for playing. No, um, <laughs> in all seriousness, here's here's what, here's why this is high school, this is freshman algebra, maybe even eighth grade. E is voltage. I is amperage or amps. Hmm. R is ohms. It's a ratio. It's a, it's a ah. simple formula, ohms. So, 
A equals B times C. Well, if you change one of these, you're changing the other values. So if I do this, oh, this is off the table that I just showed you. You can solve for ohms, can't you? So if I do this, the table told us that it was 0.6. You can solve for ohms. Right. Okay. So Perfect. where that's coming from is E equals I times R. That is a, if you know one formula in door hardware, know this formula. You don't have to memorize it because all you have to know is where to find it. And that can be a book, a tech support call, a coworker, right? So okay. that's why that is like that. So every time that you do anything that has higher voltage, you'll have less amperage. The reason that less amperage is nice is because your power supplies can in general power more devices simultaneously and you may need less of them on the job. Now, when you go past that, how do you power a DC strike with AC voltage? You simply install a rectifier. So basically, um, you may know that your voltage in your house looks like this under an oscilloscope. It's a sine wave. It's 60 hertz per second, right? That's you know, right. that's just what it is. DC voltage coming out of a battery looks like this. It's just a line. So on a multimeter, when you see this, you're measuring DC voltage. When you see this, you're measuring AC voltage. So what a rectifier does is it takes this and clips it. It just clips it like this so that it's kind of doing this now, and that's close enough to this. Oh. That's how a rectifier works. Now, it works all the time. Now... The thing you have to know, the big thing is if someone says, oh, you've heard the term buzz someone in, mm -hmm. only AC yeah, voltage yeah. buzzes because you're hearing the hertz cycle. That's, you're hearing the 60 uh. cycles. When you rectify AC voltage to DC, you will no longer hear that. All you'll hear with DC is a click, and that's the solenoid moving. The solenoid is what's in here, and as we had spoken in the past, when you introduce voltage into a... Uh, coil of wires. Magnetism is the byproduct. If you have a magnet in the solenoid and you're producing magnetism, if you put those poles towards each other, you're going to push them away because opposites attract. So when you have the same polarity, it'll push the vol push the solenoid bar. Well, the solenoid bar is connected to something that you want to move, like a latch bolt or a keeper on a strike or something keeping this locked. If you've not hit subscribe yet, we would very much appreciate if you did, and hopefully you're enjoying this video. Now, let's get back to it. Then, you have to know the difference between fail secure and fail safe. That's something that you probably just need to memorize, because you'll see mm -hmm. it called different stuff. FS, FSE. Um, so, the, way, the definition is, in the event of a power outage or when there's no power, that strike can be either in the unlocked or locked position. You have to know that. Right. Fail secure is in the absence of power, the door is, you guessed it, secure. Fail safe just means in the absence of power, someone can push that door in like the fire department. I don't have a good analogy right. for that to memor or a mnemonic. You'll just have to you'll just have to kind of memorize it and ask over time. You must must must. Uh, know that. I just think about a prison. I just think about a okay. prison. Okay. Okay. So secure. Yeah, it's secure. But that's a fail secure. Yeah. So in, in the absence of power, the thing is locked. I love it. <laughs> it works. So that's well. that's how, the one thing. One of the few things I remember a few years ago. So yes, that stuck with me. You know, and then you know, and then the other one is you know, of course, that's like in a fire application. You know, you want it to be safe, so it opens. You know, and when there's no power, so um, or more or less. But more or less. Let's let's back that up. There is right. no such thing as a fire-rated fail-safe strike, because that is unlocked. In the event of a, you right. have you have there are three commandments on that tablet for fire doors: must be self-closing, must be self-latching, and must be free swinging. Don't worry about free swinging, but in what's going to happen when there's a when there's a fire in the uh, alarm panel it's going, going to open the circuits right so right, right, those, yeah. those, right. I, I realized that was wrong once i said it yeah no like, wait, that's a i think you understand it's a little different you understand it but let's just so in the absence of power when those when the relays on the fire panel open that circuit those strikes are going to be stone cold locked that's fail secure go back to your prison thing it's awesome gotcha 
with okay, D- perfect. Awesome. With DC, you can have an entry buzzer because some people might want to hear the strike is being buzzed. In DC, you won't yeah, hear that. So you can add an enunciator. You know and then you can add parts, switches. We'll find out what the like, parts are, you want to report now, back to access control that the keeper is in the closed sales, position or there's a latch bolt the present house, inside of here. So you can add monitoring to it. Great pictures of open back strikes here. So that's a, a shit ton of information in a very small mm-hmm. amount of time. But the summary of this is, when it comes to electric strikes, pick a catalog and, o- and obey it, observe it faithfully, and you will not go wrong. And if you're unsure of your selection, ask a coworker, ask tech support, ask the mailman. Just get clearance from clearance. Get validation of your conclusion um, okay. because they're expensive. Once they prep for them, it's a bitch to get them out. Once they've powered them up and find out that it's the wrong voltage, it's on you. What are you going to do? Take mm-hmm. back a used electric strike? It's like wearing underwear and sending it back. Right. So, you know, so this Von Duprin catalog is um, sentimental to me because it's the one I learned from. But Hess does a good right. job with all those pictures. Okay. Very good. And all yeah, of their the, tech the support that... is, is phenomenal. Every, Adams Wright, Hess, RCI. Dorma, Von Duprin, uh, Trine, phenomenal. Love me some Trine. I use Trine every time I can because they're independent and they're great tech support. Okay, awesome, awesome. Yeah, it's interesting how many of these things I didn't even think about. Like just mentioning wood door or frame and metal, I'm like, oh, it didn't even occur to me. Well, so. I, I had that customer walk back in. I insisted that I gave him the right strike. VD62, Von Dupin 6210, he'd come back, he says, I told you I had a wood frame. I'm, and I'm looking at him like, he's stupid. <laughs> he was about to hit me in the head with it, and I realized, oh, put the ego away, my man. Class is in session, and you're the student. <laughs> so, yeah, I shut up and I learned right there. It's, a, uh, yeah, it seems like there's just so many moving parts to get right on, like, an entire entryway. You know, you don't want to get that wrong. Same thing with electric strike. Uh, double double check every single thing because one wrong thing is going to be a return that can't be returned essentially on something electrified yeah, the, the nerdy the nerdy joke is you know why do they call it hardware right so if it was easy everyone would what's do it. The, what's the punchline because i don't know if it was it easy everyone would do it uh, okay there we go yep. there we go i might have to use that <laughs> just just on okay. people who haven't heard it because everyone else is like right wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one who hasn't heard it in this situation. So meanwhile, everyone else working in the industry probably has, because I think I've actually heard that before. Now that you mention it, so okay. Um, all right. Well, Bye-bye. very good. I'll talk to you. Appreciate it, Rich. Bye. Talk to you. Bye now. Architectural Builders Supply hopes you have enjoyed this program. Please click thumbs up. Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.